This small farm is located in a nearly impossible to find backstreet of Vietnam's rural Mekong Delta. You kind of have a welcome drink for us. This land is the birthplace of some of the best cacao in the world. It's not tea, it's not coffee. Something Mr. Lau found out just one year ago. As far as I understand, you've taken the cacao and you've made it into kind of an alcohol. Is that right? For a long time, this time, the whitish substance inside the cacao pod surrounding the seeds, this pulp used to be considered waste. But now, Mr. Lau has found another use for it. He extracts the juices, boils it with salt and sugar, and adds some natural yeast, allowing it to ferment for 90 days. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it almost tastes like a flavored soju or something. It's a little sour, a little sweet, certainly pretty acidic going down. It ignited my heartburn. I need a Pepsi AC. But otherwise, it's really good. I'm curious how you got your start in chocolate. How old were you when you first tried chocolate for the first time? Do you remember? Oh my god, stop staring at my Mr. Lau started his cacao farm just 10 years ago. He didn't even know cacao could be grown in Vietnam. Since he's 10 years old, there is an American soldier. Give him some chocolate and some Milo. So. Really? And go. Now, he's taking care of 400 cacao trees, even intercropping with coconut trees. Oh, it smells like shit here. Chicken. It's chicken poop. Imported from Belgium. Are you serious? Can we eat it raw? Yes. Oh. Oh. Oh, the reveal. Whoa. Let's try it out. Yeah, let's try. Cheers. Mm. Hello. <laughs> it's sweet oh. and sour on the outside and really oh, bitter. Yeah. In this region, the best time to harvest cacao beans is from October to May. After the pods are cracked open and the seeds expelled, they must begin the fermentation process within six hours. How long does it have to ferment here? From five to six days. The chocolate that we're going to be tasting later, how is it affected by this fermentation process? Do you know? No, 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 no. Depends on several aspects, but if you over fermented it, they don't have the very rich smell in the aromas of chocolate. After fermentation, the beans are sun dried for up to 10 days before they're sent to the factory. The flavor can vary from bean to bean or even from batch to batch. So how do you know if this bitter little bean is going to make some good chocolate? <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, that's the second best high you can get. That's good. Meet Vincent Maru. He and this guy, Sam Maruta, founded Maru, a dark chocolate manufacturer that produces and sells bean-to-bar products. This is actually an amazing moment because these are essentially 100% fermented, which is really, really difficult to do. Taste it. From the beginning, these guys hunted down the best cacao varieties throughout Vietnam, mm. creating six different recipes based off cacao in six different regions. A little bit sour? It's a little sourness, yeah. Rich, nutty, enjoyable bitterness. A bit of vanilla in mind. There's subjectivity, but also each one is a bit different. These cacao beans right here, I've heard these are among some of the top rated in the world, but how does that come to be? Because he was already doing good quality cacao, but it wasn't recognized. So we met Mr. Lau and he was excited because we were actually making a product that he could taste. We sent some samples last year to the Salon du Chocolat the world's largest chocolate show. And so he came with us to Paris, not knowing that he would eventually become one of the winners, considered one of the top 15 cacao fermenters in the world. So this is a special cacao. Set me free or give me death, yeah. Next, these processed beans make a three hour journey to the Baru factory in the bustling city of Saigon. Give me death, man, I'm on my way, yeah. You can find out you want some the devil, where you sign at? How do you transport this chocolate in Vietnam? This country is so hot. The number one challenge is the heat. So we have refrigerated trucks that come here. We are very careful with the shipping. This factory produces over 20 different chocolate products. We can make 15 tons a month. Metric tons are in met. One metric ton is 2,204.62 pounds. Cacao was being exported and it was never being seen. So it just needed someone to take another look at it. I'm assuming you come from a long lineage of chocolate makers, yes? Absolutely not. 
Sam, my business partner and I, when we created Maru, one of the most exciting things is we had so much to learn because we were not from chocolate. Moved across the country. We made chocolate in this kitchen and we used an oven, we used a blender, the beans that we tasted that night, and as chocolate lovers, we had never tasted anything like it, convinced us to go into chocolate. Step one, roasting. The beans go straight from the warehouse through a pipeline to this roasting machine. It's the same machine as a coffee roaster. It's just that it's been modified for cacao. Inside, a spinning drum keeps the beans moving while hot air circulates through. This process is known as convection heating. After roasting, the beans must be quickly cooled so they don't continue to cook. We need to cool it as quickly as possible. This is crucial for developing the chocolate notes. Step two, cracking and winnowing. This machine's job is to separate the shell and the nibs. Cacao nibs are the crushed bits of cacao bean inside the shell. The shells are quickly broken into pieces, while the nibs are separated and sorted into these buckets. Since the shells are lighter, the machine simply blows them away. The shells are sent back to the farmers to use as mulch. But the nibs are categorized into different sizes? Yeah, because that makes it more efficient to separate. But are big nibs used for anything different than small nibs? No, absolutely not. It's the same material. Step three, grinding. These heavy rolling stones grind the nibs while generating friction, thus releasing cacao butter, creating a thick liquidy consistency within three hours. Here, if you want cacao powder and cacao butter, the liquid cacao can be pressed to separate each material. What are some other ingredients that you're using a lot of? Cacao is our main ingredient because we make a dark chocolate, which has sugar, 20 to 30 percent, is added to the cacao and to make our chocolate. Step four, tempering and molding. Is this like you would temper an old samurai sword? Yeah, essentially, we're tempering chocolate like a samurai sword where we're using temperature to harden. This liquid chocolate mixture is heated to a temperature of 122 degrees, then cooled to just under 86 degrees. Then it's increased slightly once more, so it can be applied to the molds. Cacao butter takes on six different crystal shapes based on temperature. So we know at a certain temperature, we're gonna get a type five crystal. And so when we see a nice shiny chocolate, we know it's well tempered. After molding, the bars head through a cooling tunnel. The finished bars head to the packaging room where the bars are weighed and wrapped in the appropriate packaging. Whoa. This is great, really incredible to see how it's made. I think it was always kind of a mystery to me. I knew beans were involved, that's about all I knew. But to see the transformation, it makes me appreciate chocolate so much more. It's so extraordinary for such a natural, seemingly simple product, but there's so much that goes into it that you might not ever guess. So there is a magical quality to cacao and to chocolate. There are very few other things on this planet that make so many people excited. I can only think of one, <laughs> cheese. Really? Uh. About 20% of these products are exported, while the rest are sold here in Vietnam. Much of it makes its way to My Son Maru, their flagship store. We've made it to the shopping. The shopping. Mr. Lau has made the three hour trek from his farm just to join us. But first, I need to finally get a taste of the chocolate beauties I've been staring at all day. Okay, so the first thing is to smell it. Mmm. There you Fine. go. Give it a smell. And then the color, the texture, and then you bite into it, but don't chomp on it, and just let the aromas kind of fill your palate. Mmm. Dark chocolate can be chalky, it can lack that softness, that tenderness, mm -hmm. and so this has like all the best parts of dark chocolate while still being moist. At the end of the nose, I feel some sour. There's a bit of spice, mm -hmm. right? Dried tropical fruit. So we have another region here. This is Lamdong, a province known mostly for its coffee. It looks exactly the same. It smells a bit lighter. Yep, not as fragrant. It contains coconut, right? You're right, there's a little, little bit of coconut. Dang it, I should say something. I think the average person would not be able to tell the huge difference. Okay. But for me, who is also an average person. Maybe go back to the Ting Yang. More friendly. Definitely more sour. I taste that now. Almost metallic. Huh. 
<laughs> no, I mean, not that. The more you take some time with it, then you notice the differences. If you just chomp through it. Which is my habit. <laughs> Mason Maru is more than a shop selling sweets. It's an immersive confectionery magic carpet ride. They've got it all, from chocolate bars to inventive pastries. She's my lover. Chef. Chef? Chef. 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 Pastry chef? Pastry chef. Pastry chef. Yes. Stephanie. Yes. This looks gorgeous. This is a Maison Maru tiramisu. This is Stephanie. She worked three years as a pastry chef in a three-star Michelin-rated restaurant in London. Voila. Now, she's here, developing new desserts, <laughs> but even more, developing a new generation of highly skilled pastry badasses. Wow. Such a satisfying experience. Super creamy, just a touch of, you know, chocolate and coffee are kind of best friends. They're meant to be together. They're in the bean gang. Vietnamese coffee from Dalat. Tender. It's tender. Medium rare. Medium rare. <laughs> Stephanie will be whipping up three different desserts. Even though Lao makes a significant contribution to the flavors of this place, he's yet to try any of the items hitting our table today. Oh, there he is. He's coming. Please. Have you been in this shop before? First time you've been here. Well, let's dig in. This is the mousse right here. It's very creative. First up, mug mousse. The mug is made of a soft chocolate cookie. On the inside, shortbread and chocolate mousse. Sprinkle in cashew nut and cacao nibs. Add caramel and sweet whipped cream. Then top it with cashew powder and more chocolate nibs. On the side, icing sugar sprinkled on chocolate shortbread. Um. <laughs> you ruined the cake. I ruined it, but my bite looks fantastic. Are you ready? We all yes. have the perfect bite. Let's go for it. Bo hi bye yo. Oh. Wow, it's like the chocolate bar in mousse form. So it's so soft, airy, and creamy, but it has all those complex notes that you taste in his bars. Do what do you think? He like it. He also feel really happy when having those bites. You have such a special role in this whole chocolate making process. For you, what is it like seeing the final product? Very happy and proud when seeing his cacao material have the very beautiful display, beautiful packaging, and make those very delicious cake. Let's move on to our next dessert. Right here, sir. It's called the Classic Opera. The Classic Opera has multiple layers of biscuit jacon and coffee ganache, a mixture of cream and chocolate. It has some cookies on top. Are these cookies? Macaroons. Oh, these are little macaroons. Yeah. 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 Bye. Bye. Yo. <laughs> Sweet, spongy cake, nice layers that kind of break apart in a very pleasing way in your mouth. I love both. I love both. Yeah. Yeah. This here is the chocolate tart. Take a look. It starts with a shortbread tart shell, a mix of chocolate biscuits and chocolate ganache. Add chocolate chantilly and cashew nut. Finally, mini brownies with icing sugar on top. Oh, and a little hat. Why not? Uh, yo. <laughs> mm -hmm. More of like the dark chocolate feeling, sweetness mixed with bitterness, creamy, nice crust. Oh, this is so much sweet. I'm going to have a heart attack after this. <laughs> Besides, the bitterness of the chocolate, mm. it has some salty taste right. in it. Uh. So he preferred this one. These days, I'm curious what motivates you to get up, to get out there, and to keep improving your craft each day. Mm. When he was a high school student, he has his mentor talk to him. When you do anything, you must do it passionately. Since then, he's always kept updated with the new thing, try to adapt to the new world. Oh, dogs eat the same thing with fish. <laughs> and for those cacao, partially is financial thing, support his family. And another thing is his passion about the cacao, growing um, the cacao that helps other farmers too. Helps other farmers? His family is the one that collect cacao from other farmers in his province. Mm. Thank you for taking the long ride all the way up here just so we could eat dessert together. For me, absolutely worth it. It was an honor to get to learn more about your life and your work and then to try the end product with you in person like this. Thank you so much. For me, this was always something I took for granted. I am in awe of its complexity. Someone long ago figured out that this bitter bean must be picked, fermented, ground, and mixed with sugar in order to make what is now the most commonly eaten sweet around the globe. The fact that these days, anyone from just about any country can get their hands on a chocolate bar is a modern-day miracle.
Welcome to the Best Ever Merch Store, where you can check out our brand new designs. Best Ever Bandanas in black, white, and red. The Please Send Nudes Hoodie. Pillow Soft Fabric with a quality custom graphic inlay. And our Street Food Around the World graphic tee. We're now shipping everywhere around the world. Just visit shopbesteverfood.com or click the link in the description below to get your new merch today. A piece. Boom! And so that's chocolate, and that's how it works. From seed to dessert to diabetes. We did it. <laughs> Check out Han's YouTube channel called Han Around. There she's doing a ton of wine tasting and wine suggesting? Yeah. Everything you want to learn about wine in Vietnamese with English subtitles, it's there for you. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. A piece. Well, you didn't say it. Can you say it? A piece. A piece. <laughs>